Welcome to our Retrofit Plus event. Today, we have an exciting lineup of speakers, applications, and products, all for you. We'll help show you how to optimize your systems, reduce tenant complaints, and ultimately achieve significant energy savings. Throughout the event, should you have any questions, feel free to enter them into the chat. We'll get to them towards the end. Before we dive into discussing a few different steps of how you can optimize your buildings, I'd like to give my colleague, Nicole, from Dallas, Texas a call. Nicole has extensive experience helping customers retrofit their buildings. Hey, Nicole, tell us more. Hi, y'all. Hi, Daniel. This is Nicole from Dallas. You're right, I've helped many customers on retrofitting projects, and I'm here to clarify some of those myths. Let's touch on energy savings for a moment. Systems are large and people are unaware of how much money they can actually save by retrofitting field devices. As buildings are dynamic, they change with purpose over time. Retrofitting with smart devices can have a huge impact on the bottom line. When speaking with customers, one of their main concerns about retrofitting is the construction noise and disrupting their current tenants. I'm here to let you know, it's a minimally invasive process and the tenants will hardly even notice. Another misconception that I come across when speaking with customers is that you have to go all in on a retrofit project, but that's not the case. You can retrofit in stages and not only does it fit well within your maintenance budget, it still has a huge impact. Thank y'all from Dallas. Now back to you. Very insightful. Thank you, Nicole. To start, we've developed a very simple questionnaire to help you identify whether or not there's savings available for your applications. Feel free to try it out. And now, let's dive into retrofitting. If there's substantial room for improvement in your buildings, consider updating the entire HVAC system. To optimize the flow of heat and cooling throughout the building, it is crucial to know the distribution of water inside your building. Unfortunately, we often find that this level of transparency just does not exist. Furthermore, these performance issues are amplified because it's impossible to know how the building will evolve throughout the years. In these scenarios, a perfectly well-tuned hydronic system is nearly impossible to balance. The result, your building management team will constantly be chasing down problems. Therefore, the critical first step in optimizing your performance is to first create transparency. Think, for example, you go into the medical doctor's office and they reach for a scalpel before even performing an x-ray. It's highly unlikely. Once you have transparency into your hydronic system, you can understand that you're on the right path towards performance improvement. You're gonna need the right tools to do so. And you guessed it, we have them. The marquee device for providing system transparency as well as performance optimization is the energy valve. If you don't have energy valves installed in your building yet, the investment to do so may seem daunting, but don't worry, it's not, and it's totally worth it. To prove it, you'll hear from some of our customers a little bit later. In the meantime, Let's dive into the energy valve a little bit deeper. So, if your goal is to create transparency in your system, as well as have well-balanced hydronic loops, you're gonna need a complicated assortment of connections, devices, integrations, or you can simply choose a powerful valve. One that's capable of going above and beyond your expectations. If you didn't see our live event on the energy valve, you can still check it out on our website. Believe me, it's totally worth watching. We're really proud of the technology and capabilities of our smart valve. It communicates directly with your building management system, showcasing the heightened level of performance as well as transparency. And of course, it comes standard with our five-year warranty. While the energy valve provides an enormous amount of value and performance, we recognize that it may not be the exact fit for your application. In these circumstances, we at least advise you to progress from legacy technologies, such as pressure dependent valves, to the modern electronic pressure independent valves. To help us understand just how impactful this level of upgrade can be, let's talk to Yedek from the Austrian Institute of Technology. Hey Yedek, can you tell us more? Hi Daniel, thanks for inviting me. I'm here at the Austrian Institute of Technology. I'm working as a research engineer in the Center for Energy. The AIT is Austria's largest non-university research institution and is a specialist for infrastructure topics of the future. 
At the Center for Energy, 270 experts are working on energy systems of the future. We tested different hydraulic variants. In particular, we compared pressure-dependent and pressure-independent systems. We simulated the heating and cooling system of an office building with 24 different zones. In our simulation, we tested the following hydraulic variants. Pressure-dependent, pressure-independent with two set-point control, pressure-independent with continuous control, and electronic pressure-independent. In each of those variants, we measured the energy consumption of the pumps. We tried to find out the variant that can save the most energy. Replacing pressure-dependent with pressure-independent valves with two set-point control brings a reduction of the energy consumption for the pumps of 1% for cooling and 5% for heating. Replacing the two set-point control with a continuous control results in a reduction of the energy consumptions of the pump of 15%. This is quite remarkable, as there are still many valves with two set-point control on the market. Intelligent control, that means optimization for feedback from the electronic valves and the use of a pump optimizer, leads to a further significant reduction of the energy consumption. Compared to a pressure-independent solution with continuous control, we can save up to 35%, and compared to a two set-point control, up to 50% of the pump energy consumption. Those are enormous savings. Adapting the hydraulic system does not only result in a reduction of the electrical energy consumption, but also in a reduction of up to 7% for the CO2 emissions and up to 12% for the thermal distribution losses. Thank you, Yedek. That was a pretty interesting study. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website, where we have all types of information related to pressure-independent and pressure-dependent valves. I hope that we've inspired you to update your HVAC systems, balance it accordingly, gain transparency into how it's operating, and of course, making it pressure independent. Only when you know where the energy is going can you fully optimize for savings. Now, let's hear from some of our customers and see how their improvements have impacted their operations. We want to work smarter to supply better buildings for the tenants and thus better returns for our investors. We looked at retrofitting all of our buildings on East Campus with the energy valve, thus saving the GPM that we needed. And in doing so, we were able to free up enough chill water capacity to meet the needs of the new dormitory. We walked through buildings wondering where the energy was going. Sometimes it was warm, sometimes it was cold. That was how we used to help ourselves. But now this is no longer necessary. It's very important to be able to install the energy valve and modern pumps in an old building in order to gain insight and take control of the energy consumption in old buildings. And there does not need to be any major renovation of the house in order to introduce these few components and retrieve data so that you can start saving energy. The energy valve manages that delta T at the point of use, which maximizes dehumidification, increases the delta T at the piece of equipment, which then translates it back to the central plant, which optimizes the chiller performance. We save when we run the operation because we get faster and better insight into what is happening in the building stock. And as operators, we spend less time discovering if there's something wrong. With the energy valve, we have savings that we can see. It's always great to hear from customers. And that reminds me, please don't forget to put your questions in the chat. We'll get to them later. All buildings have varying levels of needs, both short and long term. In your instances, maybe you can't update the entire HVAC system. In those cases, there's still opportunities to apply technology of today into those applications and still make huge improvements of comfort as well as energy savings, ultimately improving your overall CO2 footprint. Here we'd like to draw your attention to the following. Replace old to new. Maybe you have end devices in your building that just aren't properly working anymore. Maybe they're old, or maybe they're just manually controlled. In any of these cases, sometimes replacing them completely is the best next step. Doesn't even matter what type of actuator you currently have on your control valve. We always have a suitable replacement for the linkage. That way you can replace the actuator with a modern standard. 
End devices have been made a huge leap forward over the last few years, not only in optimizing your building's performance, but also improving the health of our planet. For example, one of our end devices already offset the CO2 emissions generated by 24 times over the production and operation life cycle. There are several factors to consider when replacing just the actuator versus the entire valve assembly. In any case, we want you to be aware of just how compelling a characterized control valve can be in replacing a glow valve. It can perform above and beyond the levels and at a very compelling value. So how do we have such detailed information regarding the performance of valves? Well, we take an assortment of them and put them in our testing and verification center and measure and document the data and performance. Let's take a look at how these operate. Hey, Jeff and Tequila, are you there? Hi, Daniel. Hello, and welcome to the Verification Center for Water located in Danbury, Connecticut. This is Jeff and Tranquilo, and we're both part of the IVQ team. IVQ stands for Innovation Verification Quality. And here in Danbury, we have a 15,000 square feet facility where we can do performance and life cycle testing on our valves. So all of our life cycle testing, we typically take a control valve from zero to 100,000 cycles at minimum and maximum temperature at a constant differential pressure. And currently our rigs can hold up to 240 different sizes of valves. They can manage anything between DN10 and DN450 in size. So here at the Verification Center, we support our colleagues globally with a wide variety of topics, including research, development, and customer application. And we benchmark our products against current technology available out there in the market. That performance testing includes torque, leakage, and flow performance. And we do this so we can keep consumption low and comfort high. So here at the Verification Center, it's our mission to provide a high quality, reliable product. Awesome guys, thank you. It's always great to hear that quality is still our number one priority. Now, in case you're retrofitting an actuator on a valve and you don't know which one to select, it's really easy to figure it out how. Just go ahead, open our Retrofit Plus app, take a picture of the valve actuator, and then the app will tell you what the best selection is. Pretty simple and clever, right? The Retrofit Plus app is available to download now. When it comes to retrofits and replacements, outliers do exist. Whether it's a unique situation, such as a tenant fit out gone awry, or even in a wall misplaced, you name it. In these situations, we've got something for you as well. We call them customer specific products. Let's see how they work. We have been observing a lot of changes in our market. So we see uh, prefabricated buildings coming up. We see a shortage on lead times in the projects and shortage of technical staff. We have a serious challenge to fulfill the demand of our customers. The main part of that is installation time. So how can we reduce installation time? Welcome to the Belimo machine shop for retrofit custom solution. Custom Retrofit has the opportunity to come up with a solution for our customer needs and unique opportunities. The Belimo Retrofit Design Team has the right software tool to make a precision fit. Belimo sells more than just a product. We will fulfill the customer needs. If you can dream it, we could build it. Fantastic offer, right? What we have next are the simple solutions you can install immediately and start seeing savings. At the time your building was completed and those first tenants moved in, it was likely commissioned to operate as it was intended to perform. Over time, things change, whether it's the degradation of the system or tenants moving in or out. Most likely, the system is not optimized for its current situation. In these cases, we suggest you go back and commission those end devices again. It all starts with the reliable and accurate measurement of the relevant parameters. Remember, what cannot be measured cannot be controlled. That's why at Belima, we have a wide range of sensors, including temperature, pressure, flow, and gas. Not to mention, we also have room sensors and room operating units. One of my favorite features of our room sensors is that we can offer them with an onboard display or with a virtual display. 
In situations where you want to avoid unauthorized access, go ahead and just use your smartphone and you can read the values. Not to mention the CO2 traffic light function. Occupants can get an immediate indication of the indoor air quality in their environment. All of this is absolutely in a beautiful package and communicates Modbus or BACnet to your building automation systems. In some applications, a central ventilation unit provides fresh clean air to multiple zones. Each of those zones has its own unique requirements for the amount of fresh air. A way to optimize this is to use a demand control ventilation tactic. In this operation, we provide just the amount of outside air needed to offset the CO2 gases. All you need is a CO2 sensor and a little bit of smarts. This is the best way to optimize for indoor air quality and also save energy. With the continuous reliable measurement and ensuring the proper flow gets into the space, you've already completed two of the seven essential steps towards healthy indoor air. The next five steps should sound familiar and similarly easy to implement. Three, ensure your airflow patterns are well designed so that your clean, conditioned air flows throughout the entire space. Four, active pressurization of the building envelope so you don't bring in outside contaminants when doors open or close. Five, proper temperature and humidity control to keep bad things like mold and mildew from growing. Six, effective filtration of the air. And finally, seven, using the proper amount of outside air, which is often already mandated by a standard or code in your area. And now you should be aware of how critically important it is to have reliable and accurate measurement of data throughout the building, not only to improve your comfort and energy efficiency, but also maintain a high level of indoor air quality. With these changes, we believe you can help bring your building back to its originally intended design, or better yet, make incremental changes to approve upon that. Let's take a look at a case study from one of our customers in Calgary, Canada. They built a state-of-the-art facility that was extremely energy efficient. Of course, they installed our energy valves throughout the entire building. We were able to gain insights from our valves that allowed us to reduce the pump speeds, increase the delta T's, all while maintaining thermal comfort. Let's have a look. It was a brand new building and I knew that they wanted to focus on energy efficiency. That's why we didn't have pneumatics. We used DDC. We had a brand new BMS system. We thought everything was all locked in. And yet over an investigation of 10 days, we were able to find significant savings on energy. One of the things that we came across when we were looking at our BMS system was we would be sending out an output signal of 100%. It didn't match up and we wanted to know why. When we reached out to a Bolimo representative who came on site, he quickly explained to me how Bolimo energy valves work. We went and logged in using a laptop and you're able to see flows, temperatures in, temperatures out. You were able to understand why was the energy valve so important and efficient. Working with the Bolimo techs that have been on site, we've been able to make a lot of changes on the fly. With all the technology that we have here, it's been really good partnering with this team on this project so that we're able to see the efficiencies uh, of changing the set points in an occupied building. It's kind of unheard of to be able to do that uh, without having the tenants be aware of uh, the changes happening within their space. I was shocked on this energy savings that we were able to maintain. We saved 8.9 million liters of water flow per day in the primary heating system alone. Even though the building was built to the highest technology standards, there was still room for improvement. Stay curious. Don't hesitate to ask us questions. While much of what we discuss today is easily implemented, it doesn't mean we have to go it alone. Your local Bolimo representatives are standing by to help you out. We truly appreciate your support and working together to make buildings worldwide more energy efficient, comfortable, and of course, healthier. As we say at Bolimo, together to the top. Thank you so much for tuning in with us.